this growth to value rotation that you can see right here on my screen, which we timed really, really, really well last week. Talked about it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we had this gap up on uh, the Qs and then it faded at that you know beautiful 505, 504 area. And it has been fading strongly since. And I had updated this chart and warnings that we would also have this hedge fund factor rotation potentially kick into gear, which is where small caps are rallying so hard that the hedge funds don't have, they can't catch their breath. They can't square their books to be market neutral. And they're very important stocks. We call them VIP stocks. The momentum, the growth stocks have to be sold. And they hold their breath, they hold their breath, they hold their breath. But basically, small caps had such a massive a standard deviation move, not just last week, Thursday, Friday, but through Monday, Tuesday. And then yesterday, I literally said, okay, we've had our five bar rule. I think we're going to have uh, growth pick up to the downside now. It had only softened. This short clip is presented by Club. Club provides access to Samantha LaDuc and her team of professional macro and micro traders, analysts, and educators. Club is ideal for active traders, investors, and institutions who want Samantha's best of breed market timing calls across all asset classes and timeframes like chase, swing, and trend. Get the trade before it happens. Sign up Club now and get full access to daily live trading room with Samantha LaDuc. Slack trading desk with detailed analysis and trades. Custom trade support when you need it. And much more. For more information, visit www.laduketrading.com slash club. So I listed those levels. We talked about them. But you also knew that it was coming. It really, really, it really, really came. Again, this breaking down is when QQQ puts or however you trade NASDAQ, right? Composite or 100 is a very good short. <laughs> it's just a very good short when this thing starts to peter out. So it got very, very elevated. Remember, this was the November 2021 timeframe, and we timed this really nicely. Itty bitty bit, bit of a bounce that completely unwound, broke my cherry picked indicator. And then down here, I had a double top and I said, hey, we still have a lot of room down here. We're not even in bear market territory. So all we're getting is a pause, a profit taking into earnings and the rotation into small cap hedge fund factor rotation short covering leads because this is the squeeze that gives it the power for the uh, you know beautiful gap up that we had in small caps IWM at 207 to run all the way to 225 in the matter of four sessions. So literally small caps moving 11.11% in one week is not usual. <laughs> so it's hedge fund back to rotation where they're covering their shorts. We already had correlation, which is another kind of variance and volatility selling at all time lows, begging to revert. Craig and I talked about that the past two weeks, in fact, waiting for that to trigger. And more than that, more, more many weeks talking about at some point this thing's gonna blow which means blow up correlation in the uh, the factor. Also, we've had this breathless rally. I mean, come on. We took out November 2021 highs and we've just pushed out very, very firmly, you know, into an area where it made sense. Anyway, growth needed to take a pause. It needed to take some profit taking. It just ahead is of earnings because important to safeguard profits, especially when you're going into and earnings season, and we have that in full view. There are other reasons as well. It's not the only reason. The hedge fund factor rotation, correlation at all-time lows, breathless rally and growth, taking a pause and profit taking. At the same time, the market bets on a Trump POTUS win that pushed that the value in cyclical plays higher, fueled by the, the short squeeze in the hedge fund factor rotation. We just hit my outs. Remember I said two, 221.65, that's not going to be hard with an overshoot to 225. And we hit 224.86. Can we call that close enough? And I said, that's it. They're just going to call on. They're going to cry uncle. This is, this is it. We get the five day rule, the five bar rule, whatever you want to call it. We've got a standard deviation that is, you know, four and a half standard deviation move. It's, very large. Um, and now they're going to have a little profit taking, but those hedge funds are going ouch. So I had a lotto in place and I, you know, already said mag seven is already weakening. Wouldn't surprise me if the queues come down 486, 86, we're almost there. We've got 488, 84, and you get a little push through that and you get 479. That's what we're looking for in the queues. Just it, it pulled back down. 
Um, here is this head and shoulders on an intraday chart, which is the two hour, right? So I've got 491, which was easy first price target. The next one is 485. So we're right in the middle, sort of kind of in the middle between these two levels, right? I really, really love this pattern. Didn't do anything doji, doji. That was a sandwich up. It could also be a cradle formation down, but it has to get and stay below. It did. It never did. This one was gorgeous, right? So we already had a perfect tag, right? It, it was at, you don't know it, but it was 505 in aftermarket. We had a beautiful head and shoulders. This thing, price targets, 491. We already hit that. A bounce, couldn't even get and stay above. And then we rolled over 491, 485. And I would still contend we break this on a weekly. For this week, the lotto that I gave was 48686 to 479. I still think it's firmly in play. Q to me is still a lot of short to 479. If you're talking about where does it bounce today? I already said 486 area, but it's not bouncing. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Um, let me go on a 15 and see. Not really. It really like gap below this still rolling over. Hasn't broken trend. That's why it's like it looks fine up here, but it's an evening star reversal. It definitely gapped down. Should bounce at this 486 should bounce at this 486, but it hasn't yet. 486, uh, 485, 90 is 486. 485, 85 is 486. So it should get back above. Let me see if there's anything going on with buying here. Q's are not done. It looks to me very much like 479 is going to hit sooner rather than later. I don't see the factor rotation done. And that's very, very, very critical. We could still come down. All right. So ASML shares are, were down 7%, now almost 10 because net income was down 19% from a year earlier, but beat the uh, 1.4 billion expected by analysts. But still, that's 19% down period ending June 30th from last year. Revenue fell 9.5%. U.S. is telling allies including the Netherlands, it may take unilateral action to restrict exports of chip equipment to China if they fail to do so themselves. All right, so that's a very large expansion candle. It did ha happen here, and then it tagged this 21 week. We just blew through the 21 week. We just gapped down to literally price target if you have this little uh, pink line, 962.24, which is where we gapped up, right? So we just left an island reversal in semis. ASML on the news that I just read you. NVIDIA said, okay, let's see if we can get to 121. We're there. And let's see where we can go from here. But you know how I feel about this. We're probably going to head back down to 116. TSM is getting run right back down to 172. Beautiful evening star reversal. I already went over that. NVIDIA, literally, I said 121 to start. 121 to start. It's working beautifully. Arm. Also, evening star reversal has to get below 160 to be really convincing. Qualcomm, that already had a gap down, filled the gap, rolling over, breaking the 10. Look at this trend line. Yeah, look at the head and shoulders. Semis are absolutely spitting up blood right now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, heck, the factor rotation folks are spitting up blood as this XLK dumps and the XLV defensives take off. That's not their baseline bet. All right, so growth pullback is on cue slowly then all at once, right? So I firmly believed IWM goes parabolic. These, these pod shops or whatever you want to call them, hedge fund factor rotation, short covering can only take so much, at least those who are market neutral. The, the IWM gaps up, IWM gaps up. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. it's not going to hold. It can't hold. Standard deviation move. They're holding their breath. Now they can't because it's actually really, really strong. And semi sell, Q sell. So we got a little extended move here. 121 to start now. One, what did I say? 16 area. Yeah. Hold on. There's another gap here. Oh, yeah. That's easy. 116.60 to 115 and a half. Much, much better price target. We hit 118. This is a much better price target. 116.60 to 115 and a half. And then you see the 55 day. So then once we break that, the 55 day starts to roll over, but it's not going to happen in one day. SMCI. That's definitely bearish engulfing that 927. Look at that bugger. Just, just, just has such a hard time it, getting so how many times? Once it finally filled, this was a gap up. Once it finally filled, stayed below, it has had an impossible time of, look at this, 
How many times has it tried to get above 927 and failed miserably? That's a bearish engulfing. That's a nice short. This has to obviously continue to break down on this trend line. This has been support, 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 but it has to get below 800. That Bollinger Band opens up and it's a little bit in trouble. Okay, ASML, with reason, with reason, but that is support. 954.32, big bearish expansion candle. There's your gap fill, 962.25, kind of overshot and is trying to come back in. But that had reason for the dump. AMD, right back to 164.46. This one frustrates me, just saying. It already had the roundabout and it needs to stay below this to keep going. So if you're swing short AMD, because it did have a very nice rollover and it did have rejection at 185. I mean, perfectly. 185.50 was the high. 164.50, this is where we're at. This has to stay below on a close, on a daily close, 166.50. So it can bounce a little bit. But it needs to stay below if you want to stay short into the 200 area. Arm got a little ahead of its skis, pulling back. Arm has to break 164, but it's on the 21 day. AMD needs to break the 164 and stay below, let's call it 167. ASML is right on support with a huge expansion bar. Gap fill is having a tough time bouncing. No, ASML still looks bad. They're not done selling that sector, that uh, the, the, the hedge funds that I talk about all the time. They're just, it's just not done.